It's my great privilege to introduce the six social entrepreneurs whose five organizations are transforming the lives of millions all over the world. We celebrate these women and men for the cascade of changes they are helping catalyze together with the community assembled here, the people and communities they serve, and the support of their partners all over the world. First up, Namati. Namati is bringing the protection of the law to people and communities that once were beyond the reach of legal representation, unable to seek redress in the face of injustice. supposed to be a sacred thread, something that ties us all together and protects each one of us. But for billions of people around the world, that's not the case. Injustice is the norm and the law is out of reach. We champion grassroots legal advocates. Sometimes we call them barefoot lawyers or community paralegals who can take the power of law out of books and courtrooms and put it in the hands of people. The advocates are trained in law and policy and skills like mediation, negotiation, organizing, advocacy. Namati has focused on four kinds of issues across multiple countries. Farmers in Myanmar have had their land stolen from them for over 50 years by the military, by crony companies, and by the government itself. Today, we're working with grassroots groups in eight different states to deploy 90 community paralegals who together have supported over 12,000 farmers to protect their land rights. The paralegals explain land law in simple terms and they help farmers to secure rights over land they do have and recover land that has been taken. In Mozambique, the government has adopted very progressive health care policies, but most Mozambicans have never heard of those policies. <laughs> Grassroots advocates help people to understand health policy and to take action when the system fails. There was a woman named Angelina, and Angelina had a 17-month-old baby who had tested positive for HIV, but they had been sent home. She heard one of our grassroots advocates explain a protocol that government has adopted which says that any child under five years old should immediately begin HIV treatment if they test positive. So they went back to the head nurse and explained the policy, showed her the official documents and started treatment. Namati and its partners have worked with over 40,000 clients. By tracking data on every single case, they can advocate for improvements to laws that affect millions of people. But Namati is not doing this alone. They convene a network of over 500 groups from 150 countries, building a global movement dedicated to legal empowerment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
ultimately, this is about a deeper version of democracy, where we the people, we don't just cast ballots once every few years. We take part daily in the rules and institutions that hold us together. Thinking of Sierra Leone today, are there any Sierra Leoneans in the house? I know you though. <laughs> Maybe we could work on that for next year, Sally. <clears throat> um, I had the privilege of living in Sierra Leone for four years after the end of the Civil War. And it was in that place, it was in Sierra Leone, that I first came to experience the power of these frontline legal advocates. Um, two years ago, though, 70 families in the eastern part of the country, they woke up in the morning to find poles erected on the land that they had farmed and lived on for generations. Turns out that a chief had sold 1,400 acres to a Chinese rubber company and hadn't bothered to ask the people whose land it was. That's how many people around the world experience injustice, whether it's lead in the water in Flint, Michigan, or denial of the rights of refugees. Injustice is a cold shock, an intrusion into the things we hold dear. Those women, those families in Sierra Leone, though, those 70s families, they stood up for themselves. They navigated every step of a complex legal process with help of a grassroots legal advocate and a single dynamo Sierra Leonean lawyer who's here with me tonight, Sankita Conte. <clears throat> and um, in February of this year, the, court, the High Court in Sierra Leone did something unusual. It ordered that all that land be returned and that the company pay reparations for the damage that was done. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Yes, it doesn't always go down that way, yes. Um, and Fanta Nianda, one of the women whose land it was when this happened, she said to us, I now know the law is for us. And that is the transformation we are looking for. Let the law be for all of us. We humans, we won't achieve any of the things that we care about, protecting the environment, ensuring a fair and flourishing economy, securing basic liberties. We can't achieve any of those things if the laws and systems only work for the most powerful. That transformation in the relationship between law and people, it's possible. I've seen it happening in some of the most unlikely places but it requires us to come together. And I invite all of you to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.